We are surrounded here by pieces of technology of uh, this and the last century. And um, I'm an old man of the last century, and I started out with synthesizers. And so it's an obvious thing that I would want to go and work in immersive audio. It's an obvious thing that I would want to go and figure out how best to use something like the OnePlus Buds Pro 2, because they give me the ability to use all these wonderful naughty toys and make a great racket within my head. I mean, one of the things which has been bugging me for as long as I've done movies is when I work on the movie, I basically create this beautiful sound field, this spatial environment in which the sound lives because movie theater automatically has, you know, left, center, right, and surrounds, and now it has Atmos and it has all these other things. But I have to make a CD or I have to do any form of, of streaming, it usually just becomes stereo. So I, I lose more than half of my sound field. And I want to get this track, which was written for the Ron Howard film Rush, and very much a film which was about racing, which was about immersiveness, which was about sound, which was about speed, which was about danger, which was about romance, which was about all of those things. I think it's an ideal track to go and try to bring back to life in the way it was intended to be. So EQ to me, for instance, is, is colors, and it, it, it's just like using a paint box. So I can go and, and, and color my sounds with it. So what you have to do is, within that recording, you have to go and, in a funny way, exaggerate the moments of performance. EQ, for instance, is a great way of, like, even though people are playing full out, you know, you, you, you get a way of, of sort of giving it punch and at the same time not making it horribly, horribly aggressive. I mean, there are frequencies you just wish wouldn't exist on this earth. And then there are other frequencies you never quite get enough of. The way a normal audience imagines that a bass drum sounds is nothing the way a bass drum sounds, because we EQ the living daylights out of this thing. We put compressors on, we put bags of EQ onto the thing, you know. One of the first records I've ever been involved with, Video Killed the Radio Star, had one of the loudest bass drums. I think it probably did have the loudest bass drum at that point. And after that, everybody else was just trying to beat us. So when disco came along, the whole bass drum thing changed. And then after that, Frankie goes to Hollywood. It was just the bass and the bass drum, really. Now we're back to this sort of idea of a more organic sound and... Even though it's a more organic sound, it's still a completely artificial sound. Because the simple fact is, the technology we have isn't quite capable to capture the um, incredible range that our ear has. I mean, our ear can hear from the tiniest flapping of, you know, mosquito wings to a, a 747 taking off, you know? I mean, that's 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 quite a range in, in volume and in frequency. So where EQ comes in handy is this, if you want to get rid of the mosquito but want to keep the plane all the other way around, you know? It's a painterly tool. The OnePlus Buds Pro 2 allow a certain amount of intimacy to come out through the music that is vital in getting you to feel the emotion of a piece of music, that the subtleties, the quietness, not just the bombast, not just the big noises, actually registering and move you in the way it was intended to. It's going to take the listening experience to a higher, more refined level. <laughs>